This is the third time I've tried to record this review because I don't really know where to start. Um, first off, I'm pretty pissed and I wish I had my $14 back. $14 in tickets! In rural Southwest Virginia! And I asked them, why is it $14 to see this? Well, sir, it's a special one-night event, and the, and the movie, it's not supposed to be released for another two weeks. But still, after seeing this, I saw Don't Breathe last week at 2.40 p.m., empty theater to myself, and it was five bucks. I would have rather seen, and I, I loved it, I would have rather seen Don't Breathe two more times consecutively at that same showtime than ever fucking entertain the notion of ever seeing Rob Zombie's 31 ever again. This is the last Rob Zombie movie I will ever, ever give him the benefit of the doubt on in terms of sitting down and watching it. I'm fucking, I'm on, I, like Eli Roth last year with Green Inferno, that sucked so hard after all the hype that I finally 100% gave up on Eli Roth. He sucks! Uh, Rob Zombie proved to me after this film that Devil's Rejects was a complete fluke that was a success mainly because of the character actors that were in the film. That was a fluke. That was an accident. It should not have been as good as it was. This film... Okay. Lords of Salem was bad. But at least you could say it was competently, it, it was well shot. It was, it had a competent hand in the art direction and the cinematography. At least, if nothing else, this was a fucking wreck. This was a train wreck. I'm not trying to be over dramatic. I'm fucking pissed. This is my second cigarette in a fucking row. After getting out of the theater, trying to gather my thoughts to put it into a nice little, little package for you to unwrap and enjoy. And I'm going to try to sum it up without, sp there'll be spoilers at the end, but I'll warn you and you can, you can dip out. This film, it's a, it's another play off of the most dangerous game where a bunch of of people are hunted down for sport or in, in the original story I think it was just one guy but they're hunted down like animals and they're told they'll get a prize if they survive it this, this is an offshoot of that like like the run it's like if you took the running man and then you threw it in a pot and then you threw in elements from 40 45 other different grindhouse movies in there and you stirred it all up all those tastes are gonna taste pretty fucking bad and that's exactly what we got here. We got a goddamn bullshit gumbo, and I for one don't appreciate it. Um, but it has the balls to open with a Kafka quote. Just no, you, you can't, especially not after what follows it. Um, but after paying 14 bucks for the fucking ticket, the movie starts, well, the movie doesn't start. The movie doesn't start. Two Rob Zombie videos start first, back to back, and it's not the good old stuff either. To remind you that this man once gave a fuck about entertaining people. I would have loved. I would have rather seen the video to More Human Than Human on a loop for 90 minutes than this film ever again. No, it's the new Rob Zombie, the one where he's either I'm a Ronnie Dangle, running down to five, and the little demon skull's gonna come alive. Or this Rob Zombie. Hey, dude, don't do anything, don't ram a dama. Which actually is not that far from what the second song was. I swear to God, the second music video that came on was literally Rob just going Ram a dangle, wham, damn, fame a dangle, grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
So if you ever wondered why there's a different looking Knight's King or if something's off, it's because they got a new actor. But this guy is admittedly really good. Really creepy. Really grungy, nasty. He was that guy that was in Halloween 2, another shitty Rob Zombie movie, that was talking about fucking dead chicks, and then he goes, cow, cow, and then they just hit a cow because. Um, but the opening sequence has him talking to a victim for about, I'd say, it felt like ten minutes, about four or five minutes, where Rob Zombie does his try to write like Tarantino, but add a bunch more white trash lingo in it, like, Something like, I bet uh, I bet the virginity of the... the no, I, I, I'm as sure as a 50 cent skank, you know, stupid shit like that. And I'm sitting there thinking, just kill the guy. He's got a guy tied up and he's monologuing to him. I'm just, I, I should be sitting there, I should... If a monologue's being given by a creepy main villain, you should be sitting there captivated. You know, it should be like the... I mean, I hate to bring up Tarantino in, in the same basis of a zombie, but... Like, Christopher Walken's villain in True Romance was not in the movie that long, but he had a, he had monologue, a very menacing monologue about what he did, and, and, and then he has that back and forth with Dennis Hopper. You know Dennis Hopper's going to die, but the lead into that is fantastic. This is just Rob Zombie mentally shitting all over the paper and then not going back and editing things that might not work. He just leaves it all in. And by the way, this film was shot in 20 days and it fucking shows. So the film starts off the very opening. Rob's trying to mimic the grainy home video kind of like a Super 8 feel like he did at the beginning of Devil's Rejects where it's got Midnight Rambler playing in the background. Here it doesn't work at all. Here it's literally just just it's it's like a slideshow. It's like okay here's your main characters and they're gonna die later and it, I, I forgot what song they played at the beginning of it. I think it was the James Gang. Maybe, no it wasn't Rocky Mountain Way but you know it was one of those on the nose hey we're in the 70s I swear to God it's the 70s. You can see the ladies have hairy bushes in this era. It's the 70s. And now that I think about it, I can't name one fucking character from this film except Doomhead, which was the lead villain. And, um... Shithead? Like, they're all named Head, like something Head. Like, there's Sex Head played by E.G. Daly, who was the voice of Tommy Pickles and fucking Buttercup in Powerpuff Girls. And she's, for like 50-something years old, she still looks pretty damn good. Who doesn't look... And she's not unattractive. Not at all. And coming from me, I shouldn't be calling anybody unattractive. But Sherry Moon Zombie is showing her age. But Rob doesn't either doesn't want to tell her that or he's just so in love with her he doesn't see it and you, you're beating a dead horse Rob stop it just stop and I'm not making a horse joke because of Halloween 2 it's just that she's in all the, she's in this skimpy outfit the entire time making sexy poses and be like ah that, that, that. she literally like starts grabbing this old gas gas station attendant's dick and just starts fucking around with him and it's the guy that played Bob the Goon the Joker's right hand man in Batman and he's just this dirty old gas station attendant and a uh, uh, gas station the, the the i guess they play carnival workers i guess i mean one of them makes a joke about some kid's arm getting ripped off in a tilt a whirl or something uh but I, I guess they're carnies and she's a dancer i don't fucking know and one of them wants to be a horror movie a horror show host anyway they go to a gas station and you're thinking, oh, they're in a van, gas station, 70s. They're going to pick up a hitchhiker or there's going to be somebody there that warns them of foreboding danger. Don't go down this dirt road or don't eat the barbecue, some shit. 
No, it's just um, E.G. Daily. Tommy Pickles shows up in a skimpy outfit that she really shouldn't be wearing either. I mean, she still looks good, but these women are being portrayed as sex pots, and that time is starting to erode. Rob, just stop putting your fucking wife in the lead role in these fucking movies, Rob, because she's she was good as baby because... <laughs> Fuck, I can't do it. But that, that obnoxious little giggle laugh. She's good at playing a demented, like, Cupid doll. Like I said, she is not good at playing the final girl. She's not good at playing the heroine in a horror movie because that requires some acting chops. At least a little bit. Every final girl in every Friday the 13th movie ever made had way more range in acting than, than Sherry Moon did in this movie. But no, they show up at the gas station and uh, Tommy Pickle shows up and is like, hey, and starts starts hitting on the guy. Here's another thing about the movie. There's so much fucking slang written into this thing. And one of the characters is Jamaican. No reason. He's just Jamaican. And I guess he's supposed to be a reference to the helicopter pilot in Dawn of the Day of the Dead. But... Everything is written in this really thick lingo, and it's not performed very well. And sometimes, especially in the opening minutes, you're unsure of what anybody's fucking saying or making reference to. It's all this overly hipster douche style writing with 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 a taste of white trash, like you know Rob Zombie's good at. But no, nothing foreboding happens. Like they they get in the van and they get stopped and. In the next scene, they're right in front of Malcolm McDowell. Like, there, there's no build-up to the villains whatsoever. They, they just show up. Uh, Malcolm McDowell and these two old ladies are dressed up in, like, this British pompadour-style, kind of like Ed, Effie? Effie from Hunger Games? Kind of, you know, like, We're the MCs of the night. We're playing 31. And you're, you're going to die tonight, and that's all there is to it. And... It's pretty much just, like I said, the movie was written in 20 days. It's just point A to B. Fuck it. Well, why don't we put something interesting in between it? Fuck it. But Rob, I, no, I said fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. I'm sorry. I can't focus. That was a bad, bad movie. Just pure crap. But Drew, turn it. Come on, man. It's a Rob Zombie movie. You gotta turn your brain off once in a while. You know, you gotta expect some cheese. You know, it's just it's all about the gore and the violence. He's good. He's good at portraying that. Not in this movie. Not at not at all. Characters get injured, and I didn't know about it. I guess I'm spoiled after seeing Mad Max last year and falling in love with it and watching it like fifty thousand times. But in Mad Max. And I hate to bring it up as a comparison point again, but you could tell what was going on in Mad Max. Every shot was meticulously planned, well-framed, on the fucking mark. Rob's got a problem, uh, and it, the, the theater was filled with Rob Zombie marks. All of them had Rob Zombie. They went to the Rob Zombie movie with a Rob Zombie shirt, and even they were laughing. Every time... A character would die. I mean, sometimes for, not even for a reason. The film freezes, and he slowly pans in, and then it cuts to a new scene. But this film really revealed to me that Rob Zombie can't shoot action or fight scenes where they fuck. There's a scene where a guy's fighting a clown with a chainsaw, and he's got like a pipe. I think. I couldn't tell. Every time they swing at each other, the camera's bouncing. It's zooming in and zooming out when it shouldn't. The action is shot way too fucking close. Like, at their stomach level. It shoots... It zooms in on their fucking guts while they're fighting. One character gets hit with a chainsaw. You can't hardly tell where he's been hit. You just see a little spit of blood. And then... I don't even know if this movie was finished. It was either not finished, 
It was made poorly on purpose with the excuse we shot in 20 days, like it or leave it. Or the, the, the NPAA made them cut it a shit ton of times. It got an NC-17 twice, from what I heard. But you can't tell what's going on. It's, it's zoomed in way too much. Like, here's my hand right here. Okay, that much of the screen was taken up by a midsection of a character in the middle of a fight or pulled into the bottom half of their head. Locations a camera should never be during a fight scene. There's no reason for it. It's too close. It, it's, it, it's too jumpy. It's all over the fucking place. I know it sounds like I'm nitpicking, but you'll see. If you see this movie, you'll see. But save your fucking money. It's a fucking waste. I know there's only so many times I can say that. I'm trying to come up with an intelligent critique, but in... in in the, in the act of trying to piece together everything that happens in this film in my head and play it back and regurgitate it and have it make sense it's just not working for me I could have really used some Sid Haig aka Captain Spaulding in this movie or a cameo that might have been cool just to get me to react in a positive way towards this movie there was one character that I really enjoyed, but it's because of his performance and not necessarily because of the writing, which the, the writing is fucking awful. The writing is so bad that they actually, and this isn't a knock on it, but they actually carbon copy a scene from Rocky Horror Picture Show and play it for horror. You can't do that! Not when I'm thinking, then Eddie said, it should, it should, you know, it's no good, kid. That you're live with a switchblade knife. What a god, but you cry, and I did. You... I guarantee there wasn't one person in the audience not thinking of Eddie during that scene. But is it is it the fact that Rob just knows that he can put out whatever and people will go see it. I don't know what they call Rob Zombie fans. Like Deadheads. Like with the Grateful Dead. There's got to be a word for it. But when I go outside after the theater, there's all these Rob Zombie fans standing out there saying, oh, that wasn't what I expected, but I'm kind of biased. I'll give it a 6 out of 7. You know, I'm just great. You know, it's been say about four, three, four years since we got Lords of Salem. I was just grateful to have another Rob Zombie film. That's what Rob's banking on, man. That's what Rob wants you to do so he can make more... It's like they didn't even want to admit it sucked. They were fighting it. They knew as well as I do. They spent 14 bucks and got bent over the pinball machine. There's only so many ways I can say this sucks without spoiling it. So let's spoil it now. Um, so, if you want to leave the review, here's my score, 431. F 4 out of 10. And that's being fucking generous. It's not shocking. It's not really all that gory. There's a lot of blood, but like I said, when somebody gets injured, sometimes you can't tell. One character in the next scene has a limp all of a sudden, and it's not even shown how they got it. They just have it. They're just, they're mortally more injured than they were in the previous shot period. Um, let's see what else. Um, I'm trying to think of a positive. The Nazi dwarf, uh, sick head. The Nazi dwarf that spoke Spanish which seems like something that High Kevin Smith would write, and that movie comes out this week. Yoga Hosers, and that's also that's also got little Nazis in it, except they're bratwursts. <laughs> Thing that gets me though is this could have been just this could have been such an easy film to make entertaining. Capture a bunch of people, have them survive the night against a bunch of strange, eccentric mm, clowns, murderers, slash murderers, slash 
carnies, whatever. It, it, it could have been fun. It, there could have been some inventive gore. There could, I, there, there's no really memorable kills in this. And when they do happen, the camera zooms the fuck in and sometimes freezes and then it's a mess. It's a, it's a fucking mess. It's a mess. 31, 4 out of 10. I don't see why you're still here. Oh yeah, because I was going to spoil it. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to spoil it now, so go away if you don't want to hear what happens in Rob Zombie's new film. But like I said, the lead guy, Doomhead, the lead villain, he's really creepy. Richard Brake's a great character actor. Very menacing, very gaunt and craggy looking. It just looks like the guy that would meet you in the alleyway and would sell your pancreas for heroin. But he, he's not used enough. If anything, this film, instead of having all the different killers, should have just focused on him. He had a cool look, gave a pretty chilling performance, but then the script he was given to read just tanked it. The opening, the opening scene with the monologue and the kill is literally the guy sitting there, bound and gagged, going, you don't have to do this. And the entire time, Doomhead is looking at him and going, You have to die. See, even in hell, there's always popcorn. You know, saying all these cheesy lines that are basically just him saying, You're gonna die. It's your time. It just is. Your time is over. The minutes have run down. The sand has came out the hourglass. There's only so many times you can say you're going to die and here's why. Kill the motherfucker already. So then they get to the gas station. She dry humps the old man and he comes his pants. And it doesn't show it, but I mean, he, he came. And the film tries so hard to make Sherry Moon Zombie seem like a 20-year-old sex pot when she's fucking not. There's an older lady played by Meg Foster who played um, one of the lead characters in They Live, that John Carpenter movie. Not just that John Carpenter movie, one of his best. And for her age, she's a grandmother, but she's, she's in tremendous shape. Problem is, is that her... Now this is going to sound mean as hell, but the film's in HD, and there's a lot of shots of her just... All the wrinkles. I'm going to stop. That's just fucking mean. But there's this scene where she's sitting on a, the older lady. I don't even know her name. She's sitting there with two girls and they the, the camera is centered on them and they're all in the center. Uh, they're all shot mid-frame and they start talking about roll them, suck them, blow them. And then the scene just ends. So there was no reason for this old lady to start fingering her crotch right in front of me. I mean, she had jeans on, but I mean, stop. So then they get to the house. They're all kidnapped. And they're waiting on Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm McDowell sets them loose. And I think Bill Mosley's in it as a clown with a chainsaw. I, th I think he's in it. The film is so confusing, you can't tell if there's two clowns with chainsaws or three clowns with chainsaws. Let's see it's something straight right now, though. Clowns are scary when they look like normal clowns because they have something to hide. Because when they finally reveal their darkness, it's going to be chilling. Not when they're scary and already bloodied up and saying, You're you I can smell your pussy from here. <laughs> I mean, they didn't do that, but they basically did. It's a white zombie film. You over there, yeah, you. The morning dew of your your clit whiskers are gonna be nice upon my chin balls or whatever the fuck. So the scene I was talking about, the Rocky Horror scene. One of the one of the characters dies, and they walk into a graveyard. All of a sudden, there's no. They just show up in the graveyard, and there's a dinner table with freshly prepared food on it and the Jamaican guy like an idiot sits down and goes why you be looking at me all fair for I'm hungry I'm not going to die with... I am not going to die 
with an empty stomach. So they start sitting there eating, and you can telegraph with it. That's the thing about this movie. The movie couldn't even do jump scares correctly because it telegraphed all of them more so than they usually do. There's at least one person in the audience that gets jolted in in a jump scare scene. Nobody in this theater did. One person laughed because you could see it coming a mile away. Um, but they're sitting there eating and then Sherry Moon Zombie starts making weird faces for absolutely no reason. Like faces like this. Like Bill Cosby just got caught. And then they pull back the tablecloth and it's their friend and they were eating him. There's one scene where one of the characters comes across a dead body with a sheet covering it, steps up to it, takes the sheet off, sees that it's not one of his friends, it's just another dead body, and then goes, Oh, 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 oh thank God. Oh, 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 I thought it was, I thought it was my friend. Dude, have you seen dead bodies before or something? Is this an everyday occurrence for you? You just came across a corpse and you don't give a fuck. <laughs> oh, thank God it's not my friend. It's just some other stinking, nude, eyeless body. With its one of its nipples cut off, I think. I don't, I don't remember. I just kept waiting for Buzzsaw and Dynamo to show up from The Running Man. Or Jim Brown as Fireball. <laughs> Last season's loser. Mm. So they, uh, the Nazi dwarf shows up speaking Spanish. He's kind of cool. But then he fights. When he fights Sherry Moon Zombie, the, the camera just zooms in, all the way in, and bounces up and down. You can't see shit. It's like that movie Alien vs. Predator 2, where it could have been at least a funner film than the original one. But everything's so goddamn dark and filmed so close, you can't tell what's going on. And it's got a fucking dwarf in the shot! How hard is that to frame? Just keep the camera at mid-level! Then they come across... Th this scene is insane. They come across a woman that's sewn to a bed with wires coming in and out of her flesh it has got her bound to the mattress. And one of them's trying to save her, and the guy starts jumping around going, No! No, don't trust that bitch! That's, a, that's one of them! Don't trust that bitch, dude! She's a fucking alarm! Sure enough, like, the gates come down, trapping them in there, and this girl's laying on the mattress naked and bloody going, Please! Please help me! So, and this guy's jumping up and down going, You fucking bitch! I knew it! This bitch is one of them! She set off an alarm, you fucking bitch! You fucking bitch! Meanwhile, the, the two of the... Uh, Sherry Moon and the Jamaican guy are trying to open a door, and I'm thinking, this dude could easily help them open that door and they could get out. He's standing there jumping up and down, Screaming at this helpless, bleeding woman who, two seconds later, has a chainsaw shoved up her vagina. And you don't... I don't know if it was in her vagina or in her stomach. That was shot horribly, too. Like, the chainsaw hits her stomach and blood comes out. But then the camera is shot right above the point of entry. So you see the blood splashing everywhere in the top edge of the chainsaw. And that's it. So that was pointless. <laughs> the white guy's such a dick. It's like, you know, oh, thank God that dead body's my friend. Don't help that bitch that's sewn to the bed in horrible pain. It looks like she's been there for a week. That bitch fucking narked us out to the goddamn insane clown posse. Whoop, whoop. So everybody... <laughs> okay, all the... Uh... Then there's there's a big this could have been funny. There's a big German guy named Sexhead and he's got a wig and he's got or his Deathhead, Deathhead. He's got a wig and he's got this I think it was a big sledgehammer with nails coming out of it. I couldn't tell. And he's got a little friend that the little girl turns out to be sure enough it's Tommy Pickles and she's Sexhead and she's she's got like the Harley Quinn look going and they do their thing, and she attacks a guy, and then Rob amps up the obnoxious level considerably by having the scene, the fight scene, not only shot close, 
not only shaky, but there's a goddamn strobe light going off in the room. And I about wanted to puke. Not only could I not see what was going on, I literally couldn't see. So there's that. So all the killer, they finally kill all the killers almost except for one. The guy from the beginning. The interesting one. Uh, Doomhead. Who is... F the one scene in the film that I did laugh at, and I don't think it was supposed to be funny. Malcolm McDowell's like, so what do we do now? All the killers are dead and they're going to survive. Who are we going to call? And then it cuts to Doomhead out of his costume furiously, furiously fucking this chick in the ass and on the, there's a TV set playing in front of him and it's Nosferatu the old black and white, silent the original vampire film, which is still creepy to this day and he's fucking her in the ass as hard as he can, trying to climax to Nosferatu in the window so he gets called to come kill the remaining contestants. And he just stands up and, and calls her calls the girl he's fucking a whore a bunch of times and tells her to go finger finger her wet dripping pussy and get herself off and go fuck yourself. And there's a lot of shots of Richard Brake making this face. But he's drooling, and it's nasty, and it's effective. But like I said, the guy's not used nearly enough. And he he's trying his damnedest with the script, but he couldn't do shit with it. Nobody could. It was just, nobody could do anything with it. Most of the dialogue was like, hey, sex jokes, or you're going to lick my dick, you dirty cunt. And just, every, yeah, hell, everybody likes popcorn. That was... He uses that line in the beginning, and then in the scene where he's fucking the chick, it says in hell, every, he's got in hell everybody loves popcorn spray painted on the wall. Either say the line and leave it at that, or leave the line on the fucking wall. Don't do it twice. We, we're not fucking stupid. So they call him in, he kills the guy, the remaining guy, which leaves, take a wild fucking guess, Sherry Moon Zombie is the last one. Although there was a, there was this nasty scene I did like where she kills the older lady and sticks his fingers up under her nose and goes, you smell that? That's pussy. Actually, I don't know why I said I like that scene. That was stupid. I take it back. Um, there is a good scene where he's getting himself, he's put the face paint on, he's getting ready to work and pulling a, punching himself in the face, spewing blood everywhere and... For the remainder of the movie, he's got dried blood all over his face. But Sherry Moon Zombie finally escapes out into the world, into the sunlight, and in a direct homage to Texas Chainsaw Massacre, where Sally jumps out of their house through the window and looks around and goes, ah! Ah! In, in horror and relief. They tried to do it with Sherry Moon Zombie, but she came off as well as I just did. With the, ah! There's a lot of she scenes like that with her trying to act horrified and helpless and they and broken, and they just don't play. She finds this this little music box, which in any other film, a character would be like, holy shit, that's a trap, don't touch it. And one of them is dumb enough to do it. She grabs it and starts playing with the music box. And it starts playing its song, and then she makes this face while she's doing it. As if she just had a happy memory hitting her. And I'm thinking, you stupid bitch, it's a trap! You're alerting people to your location. She even walks in front of another character still cranking it, and he doesn't go, do you know that might fucking, uh, they might hear that shit, so fucking knock it off! So Doomhead catches up to her and starts monologuing her to death. She's laying there bleeding, and he's like, do you know who said that the quickest way to win a war is to not fight one? 
or some shit, and he's like, Che Guevara said that. Yeah, and now it's time for you to die. And he puts the knife up to her throat, and then you hear the old lady through the intercom, the speakers that are laid out all around the compound. 31 is now officially over, blah, blah, blah. And he walks off pissed. The movie, it doesn't end there either. Oh, God, it gets so much worse. The only reason she survives is because he talked too long. He fucked up by monologuing too long and she, she survives. So then it cuts to Malcolm McDowell and the two old ladies. You know, Thank you for playing 31. We look forward to it next year. And them getting undressed and, and leaving. And then it cuts to Sherry Moon Zombie walking down that dirt road bloodied and, and dazed like this. Drained. Fatigued by herself. And a van pulls up behind her and it's Doomhead who gets out of the van and just walks up behind her, staring at her, grinning. And I'm thinking, dude, this movie might redeem itself if he simply acts as if he just got off the clock and is now just some dude and just looks at her and goes, you need a ride? And she smiles and laughs like a lunatic and gets in the van and he drives away. He gives her a ride to civilization the guy trying to kill her instead he pulls his two knives and grins at her and drools and she just stares at him and the entire time dream on by aerosmith is playing and it's kind of like how zach schneider used music and watchman is just so fucking on the nose and only really used because it was a popular song at one point not because it has anything to do with the scene it's not like the scene is saying, dream on, Sherry Moon Zombie, you're fucking dead. It's just playing in the background. It's just there. It's kind of like how Suicide Squad had popular songs that would play every fucking 30 seconds almost, just slamming it in your head. Like, I think the opening of Suicide Squad had one half Casino soundtrack and one half a fucking Forrest Gump soundtrack. But it just ends. It just ends with her getting stared at by him she clenches her fist as if they're gonna fight and then the movie cuts to super 8 footage of all the friends together laughing and joking you know like the, the end of Devil's Rejects but it did not play as well here and then the movie just it's over that's the movie that's the movie there's no suspense there's no build up no character development Except for a few throwaway lines. I think one character said, Hey, you and me are brothers. You know, your mom's actually my mom. But it was so badly performed and rushed. And the writing was just horrendous. And I, I, I just didn't like it. I did not like 31. I'm sorry you had to hear me ramble and bitch for almost 40 minutes. But I'm trying to warn you, 31 is not a good movie. It's not high art. It's not low art. It's just something that happened. It's just something that exists. Like all the scenes in the movie, they just happen to serve the plot. That's it. Well, of course movie scenes do that, Drew. God, turn your fucking brain off. You don't like anything. I like simple, fun, gory explo exploitation movies. Hobo with a Shotgun, Turbo Kid, the Death Wish films, most Grindhouse films, Lucio Fulci zombie films, Devil's Rejects! This isn't it! This is just saying, hey, you know all those movies you grew up with, all those horror movies you grew up with and liked? We're gonna throw it into this goddamn bullshit gumbo and we're gonna stir it up and we're gonna just feed it to you. Oh, cool. What do I... Are you going to give me a plate of it? No, we're just going to put the funnel down your throat. And just just shove it in with a wooden stick. And you're going to like it. Otherwise, you don't like films. You don't like horror. You don't like Rob Zombie. Let me tell you something. I've been a fan of Rob Zombies from back in 1994. And then I had to wait until 1995 
for my grandmother to get tricked into buying me Astro Creep on my 11th birthday, along with a copy of Earth Motherfucking Bound in the box with the book on clearance at Kmart for $30. It was one of the best birthdays ever, and I spent it playing Earthbound with a portable CD player that you had to put duct tape around the back so the batteries wouldn't fall out. And every time I would jump on the bed, it would accidentally skip. I'd be listening to fucking Electric Head Part 1. The whole album on loop while playing Earthbound. It was great. Rob Zombie's solo album comes out. It wasn't as good, but I still enjoyed it. And then his music afterwards got really formulaic and, and honestly a bit poppy. Like the two songs that played before the movie even premiered. The first one was trying to have Sherry Moon Zombie look like a sexy zombie. She's not unattractive, but she's not the sex pot anymore. You can tell that the condom has been stretched a little too thin on those features. I don't want to talk about this fucking movie anymore, dude. This is why I don't go see a lot of movies anymore. This is why I wait. I wait for critics' opinions and the opinions of my friends. I take them both and I weigh them equally and then I go to see a film. Like, Don't Breathe, I wanted to support it. I wanted more movies like it. It seemed like an experience that would be better suited for the theater than home. And I enjoyed it. This, I took a gamble on and I fucking lost. Rob Zombie, unless he does a fucking prequel to Devil's Rejects. Yeah, I know House was a prequel. Tee hee ho ho. No, I meant a prequel featuring... The early life of Otis, Baby, and Captain Spaulding. With really good actors portraying the younger versions. Because I'd like to know more of their backstory. Because they were fascinating characters. None of these characters in 31 are fascinating. Only one memorable killer. Two, actually, if you count the Nazi dwarf. Two or three of them were nothing more than redneck clowns with chainsaws. It was muddled, it was edited poorly, it was written poorly, it was directed poorly, it was shot poorly, it was acted poorly, it was poor. As a matter of fact, hang on a second. As a matter of fact, I would go as far as to say it's a 3 out of 10, it's not no fucking 4. It's not a four. It's not so bad, it's good. It's just fucking bad. Bad. 41 is bad. You're bad. You should be fucking ashamed of yourself for making this. It's not dumb fun. It's just dumb. It's just stupid. It just shouldn't have happened. It, it they, In the middle of shooting it, they should have said, you know what? Maybe we should give the Kickstarter backers their money back because this is a mistake. It looked okay on paper. And even then, you know, this concept with a better director, like the director of Don't Breathe, I think, could have done this. How do you fuck up what is basically a remake of The Running Man with grindhouse elements? How do you fuck that up? How? Why? Why? Rob could have done better than this. That was the most frustrating part of this movie was watching it and going, how could they sit in the editing room and think, you know what, that looks good. That looks fucking awesome. Print it. Leave it the way it is. Well, Rob, we accidentally had the zoom at 500%, and, you know, the only thing you can see in this fight scene is Meg Foster's 75-year-old nipple. I don't care. It's got subtext. <laughs> Subtits. In closing, I give this movie three cigarettes out of ten. Because that's about how many I've had. I am so sorry. Don't see this. See it for free if you have to. I don't care if you gotta bootleg the motherfucker. Don't give them your money like I did. I feel like a fucking idiot. Oh, speaking of popcorn and hell everybody likes popcorn, I woefully underestimated the sizes of the popcorn. If you're by yourself, don't get a medium. Get a small. I figured a medium... I figured they'd cheat me out of a bag, and a medium would be, like, basically a small... 
a little bit extra than a small, but no, it was a fucking horking huge bag. So, you know, in hell, everybody likes popcorn. Well, I was in hell, and I got sick of the goddamn popcorn. Fuck you, Rob Zombie.